what's going on, everybody? This is Pastor Shea, a.k.a. Chaplain G, coming back at y'all with another word of encouragement. So I wanted to bring y'all this word of encouragement because I really needed it today. <laughs> and typically when I feel like I really need something, man, I feel like God wants me to give it to someone else, share it with other people so that they could be encouraged by it, too. So. Uh, as I've as I've said before on here, I'm going through this religious exemption process, and I just got hit with some news today that, um, if I'm honest, really, really, really made me mad. I mean, I mean, really made me mad. And I don't know if you've ever been in a position where something happens and it's all you can do to keep your composure. Like it's it's. It's all you can do to not just rage out and 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 uh, and just go off on everybody that's around you, right? And I had to stop and ask myself, like, what are you so mad about? What what is it that's what is it that's so upsetting to you? Like you you know this process, you know what's going to happen, you know you know. Um, the, the position of the people that you're asking, like, what is it? What is it? You know, who's at control of all of it. You know, the prince of the power of the air is there. You know that uh, the more you try to proclaim Christ, the more Satan is going to get riled up. Like, what are, what are you so upset about? And um, I, I honestly, like, I'm still doing some soul searching, trying to answer that particular question. But, um, I needed to hear, I needed to hear from God because uh, my, my, my rage was just, it was, it was starting to bubble to the surface and I, and I've been, I've been trying to swallow it down all morning. And um, it reminded me of this story where um, Jesus is walking with his disciples and he's telling them, Hey, when we go into Jerusalem, these are going to be my final moments. Like they're, they're going to arrest me. They're going to put me on trial. They're going to kill me. But three days later, I'm going to rise. And his disciples never really had a, a full clue of what he was talking about. And so Peter, Peter says to Jesus, man, that's not going to happen. Peter, Peter was a lot of times I, I find like common ground with Peter because Peter was a lot of talk. And, um, He's like, Lord, that's not going to happen. What are you talking about? Nobody's going to arrest you. And I want to read you Jesus's response to Peter, because I think it really helped me today. And, I'll, and I'll, I'll explain why. So I'm looking at Matthew chapter 16, verse, verse 23. So after uh, Peter says, far be it from you, Lord, that this shall ever, this shall, shall never happen to you. 23 says, but he turned and said to Peter, get behind me, Satan. You are a hindrance to me, for you're not setting your mind on the things of God, but on the things of man. Then Jesus told his disciples, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world yet forfeits his soul? Or what shall a man give in return for his soul? <clears throat> Jesus had a, a big task before him. Um, and, and it's a task that he, he spent his life thinking about, especially like early on in his ministry. He starts talking about it and he's, he's looking forward to the time that the cross was coming. He knew what he knew what he was going to have to endure, and I'm talking about like if you if you've never looked at a crucifixion from a from like what the Romans would do to people, it was brutal. It, the electric chair has nothing on a crucifixion. <clears throat> and Jesus knew it was coming, and he knew, like he refers to Peter. He doesn't refer to him like. Like he's the dude that's been rolling with him for three years. He says, get behind me, Satan. Like he, he knew that this isn't, this isn't my friend Peter that's talking. This is Satan trying to derail me from the important work that God has given me. And um, 
man, I needed to hear that this morning because, man, st the stuff that's happening and um, the way that people are going about doing things, it's it's similar, man. Like, it, I feel like there's a lot of stuff where people are trying to, to derail me from claiming Christ as supreme in my life. And, it, and it's been tough. And so I needed to hear Jesus say, that's not, that's not Peter, my friend, talking. That's Satan. And he says, get behind me. You're, you're focusing on these temporary things. And I'm focusing on eternal things. And then he goes on to say, if anybody would come after me, he has to pick up his cross and follow me. The cross was not, the cross is not like some fancy jewelry. The cross is not something that we, um, that we look to and celebrate. The cross was a torture chamber device. It was, it was a mark of shame, of defeat, of um, horribleness, of shame and guilt. That's what the cross represents. And, and Jesus says, if anybody comes after me, he's going to have to pick up his own cross. He's going to have to pick up his own shame and guilt and dishonor and everything else that Satan tries to throw on you. He needs, to, he needs to pick it up and he needs to come follow me. Because anybody who tries to save his life, anybody that tries to, to try to manipulate and, and work and, and move and maneuver to try to gain in this life, they're going to end up losing it. The people who come after me are the ones who are going to, they're, they're willing to lose their life. And, that, and that's how they follow me. Because there's no profit in a person gaining the whole world and then losing their soul at the end. And man, it's a, it's a tough word. It's, it's, a, it's, it's one of those things where um, it's, it's hard to be a Christian. Whoever said being a Christian was easy is full of hot air. There's some other stuff I want to say, but I'm trying to be a Christian pastor right now. <clears throat> They're full of it. Being a Christian is not easy. Jesus is, is the invitation is to come and die. And, um, the stuff that's happening right now is, is like God's invitation to come and lay everything at the foot of the cross. Everything. Everything that I've done with my adult life, God is like, are you willing to lay it at the cross? All the people that I've prayed for and cried for and married, buried their, their significant others, buried their parents, buried their children, baptized people, all, all of that, am I willing to just lay it at the foot of the cross? <laughs> or do I want to try to pursue... Um, trying to gain in this life it's a hard choice man and um but as i read this and i hear i hear where jesus was and the stuff that's before him he's about to go die for the sins of the of, of all of his people all of his people all over the world he's about to go to the cross and die for them and to to hear him say um I, I am going to focus. I am choosing to focus on the things of God, not not on the things of this place. It helps. It helps to know that Jesus has been through it. It helps to know that, man, He loved me so much that He'd be willing to lay down His life on my behalf. <clears throat> and I pray that as my kids uh, grow up and listen to this, that they know that I'm willing to do the same. I hope um, that as the airmen that I serve, as they as they see me dedicating my life to Christ, that they would feel loved in the process. Um, and I needed to hear that today. So regardless of what I choose to do, um, I'm going to focus on the things of God. And uh, I would rather <laughs> I would rather choose God than forfeit my soul. So I, I hope I, I'm in a in an agitated mood, but I'm encouraged by this passage. I hope whatever God puts before you uh, and if and if you're a child of God, there's there's going to be something in your life that God puts before you where it's going to demand that you choose an allegiance. 
And I pray that when that time comes for you, that you remember this passage, you remember the struggle that Christ went through for your behalf, and remember that uh, he chose to go to the cross so that you could be free from your sin, that you, that you could be given his righteousness. And that would be how you get a chance to spend eternity with the Father in heaven. I hope you remember those things because uh, the world is going to try to derail you. <laughs> and uh, man, I hope you all doing good. It's Friday, so I hope you guys have a good weekend. Um, I'm praying for all of you. Let's continue to pray for each other. Please, as far as this goes, please make sure to, to like, share, and subscribe. That stuff is free. It's free to you, but man, it helps a lot over here. And uh, please let me know if you need anything. Uh, but I love y'all. I really do. And I hope you're having a good day. I'll catch you next time. Grace and peace.